Sports are filled with big hits, kicks, and jumps, as well as plenty of bumps and bruises. If you sprain your ankle or twist your knee in the heat of competition, one possible treatment is applying a hot or cold pack to help minimize swelling, reduce pain, and increase blood circulation. But have you ever wondered what goes on inside these packs to make them hot or cold? The answer is simply a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction occurs when two substances that are called reactants come together and chemically combine to form a new substance called a product. The new substance will have different chemical and physical properties to the original reactants. As a chemistry professor at Hunter College, Dr. Donna McGregor has the important role of training the next generation of chemists. In the lab, she performs hands-on experiments to demonstrate many different types of chemical reactions. The two types of reactions that occur in hot and cold packs are exothermic and endothermic reactions. Exothermic releases energy. Endothermic absorbs it. Can you guess which one makes an object feel hotter? Yes, an exothermic reaction does. During an exothermic reaction, when the reactants combine to make the product, they release energy. In most heat packs, the reactant is a form of metal. In this pack, it's a mixture of the metal iron and also carbon. Once the pack is opened, the iron reacts with the oxygen in the air releasing heat. The carbon disperses the heat through the pack. So those two reactants will be exposed to oxygen in the air. When that happens, a chemical reaction occurs and heat is released. And so when you take it out of the package, it feels cool or at room temperature. And over time, when it is exposed to the oxygen, it starts to feel warm. Anything that burns or produces sparks is also considered an exothermic reaction. Can you name other examples of exothermic reactions? A campfire, barbecue grill, fireworks are just a few. Now let's talk about the chemical reaction inside of a cold pack. It's endothermic, meaning energy or heat is absorbed. But why does this make a cold pack feel cold? Because they've taken energy out of the environment that surrounds them, the environment you feel gets cold. And so an endothermic reaction is absorbing rather than releasing energy, and it feels cold instead of feeling hot. The contents of a typical cold pack are ammonium chloride and water. To activate the cold pack and start the chemical reaction, the ammonium chloride and water must mix together. This is done by popping the side containing the ammonium chloride so it mixes with the water. You then shake the bag vigorously in order to help that reaction happen. And when they mix together, the reaction is very endothermic. And so heat is going to be absorbed into the reactant and the water is going to start to get very cold. And that's what you feel when you hold the cold pack. To see the drop in temperature during an endothermic reaction, McGregor and one of her students set up a chemical reaction just like the one inside the cold pack. We'll take the solid ammonium chloride, which is a, a, a white crystalline solid, pour it into a beaker full of water, and as it dissolves, we'll see the temperature drop quite radically. Then, they set up a reaction similar to the one in hot packs. When you dissolve calcium chloride in water, the calcium chloride solution gets hot. Then energy is released, that energy goes into the water, and so the temperature of the system goes up. So the next time you reach for a hot or cold pack to relieve aches and pains, think about the role of chemistry and especially exothermic and endothermic chemical reactions in producing or absorbing heat to help you recover.